The Capitol Police, very upset with Tucker Carlson. In fact, this guy right here put out a nice letter saying that it was all hogwash. He stands by the original narrative. This was an insurrection and the police did a great job saving everybody. So we'll go through that. The Brian Sicknick family also responded to it and we'll also check in with Corrine Jean-Pierre because she said, doubling down that again, this is the worst attack since the Civil War today during a press briefing. But first let's turn our attention over to this letter that came out from the Capitol Police because they were very upset about Tucker's video. And I don't know what form this came out, if it was a memo that was emailed over or if this was a letter. I do believe that Mitch McConnell held up a letter on what this looked like, but th this, is, this is the letter. Capitol Hill Police, very upset with Tucker Carlson releasing the truth about January 6th in new videos. They write, last night, an opinion program isn't that condescending? An opinion program like Tucker, you know, he's not actual news, aired commentary that was filled, this is the Capitol Hill police chief speaking, with offensive and misleading conclusions about the January 6th attack. The opinion program never reached out to the department to provide accurate context. Well, we don't really need much accurate context from anything that we just saw, right? We just wanted the video footage in full. That's the context. You gave us a short snippet. We wanted the rest of it. That's the context. In fact, we'd like a lot more context. Terabytes of data worth. One false allegation from this police chief is that our officers helped the rioters and acted as tour guides which they did. They were walking around opening doors for Jacob Chansley. We just watched the video. He says, this is outrageous and false. The department stands by our officers in that video. In the video that was shown last night, I don't have to remind you how outnumbered our officers were on January 6th. Why was that? You had the house sergeant at arms, didn't do anything about it. You had Christopher Sun, Capitol Hill chief of police back then. He said, we probably need more people. He got rejected. Senate Sergeant at Arms, both, both of them asleep at the wheel. Who did they report to? Oh yeah, it was Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell back then. That's weird. That's strange. Capitol Hill Police, Metro Police, DC Mayor Muriel Bowser, she rejected Trump's request to bring out the National Guard. We had the letter that was sent on January 5th in a PDF. Don't you send National Guard to my city, Trump. We're in charge here. Turns out you weren't. DC Police, they, there's videos of them. There's many videos of cops now saying that they were sabotage. Man, we were set up, man. They put us over there. We should have been over there. Why'd they send us over to the back of the Capitol when we should have been over there? So then they turn around and say we were outnumbered. Well, that's well, sort of by your own design, it feels like. So you were either intentional in wanting this to happen by moving stuff around, or you were incompetent, okay? Because this was a planned protest. They talked about going and marching down to the Capitol. You knew it many days before. You had federal informants embedded with all of the different groups. So don't act like you were outnumbered, like you, like this was a war, like you just got, you know, surprise attacked. This was all planned. Other officers did their best to use de-escalation tactics to try to talk to rioters into getting each other to leave the building. Okay. Now, this program conveniently cherry-picked from the calmer moments, you like this, of our 41,000 hours of video. That's weird. So you mean the other side can cherry-pick from the most violent portions of this entire ordeal, smash them together in like a greatest real highlights clip, which is exactly what Liz Cheney has done. We'll watch that later. They're allowed to do that, and they're allowed to take the worst of the worst out of context and, and try to extrapolate that across the entire four hours. And there's the other side can't do the same thing. Well, that's a little unfair, don't you think? It's a little dishonest too. The commentary fails, we'll call it Tucker Carlson's astute insight. I like that better. Tucker Carlson's astute insight fails to provide context about the chaos and the violence that happened before or during these less tense moments. Uh, well, that's not the point of the of the segment there. You guys have already done that. You guys are like a dead horse have beaten this thing for two years, man. So we don't need to hear about it anymore. So here the officer continues. He says, finally, the most disturbing accusation from last night was that our late friend and colleague Brian Sicknick's death 
had nothing to do with his heroic actions on January 6th. Again, they're going to keep with this lie, man. The department maintains, as anyone with common sense would, that Officer Sicknick, that had Officer Sicknick not fought valiantly for hours on the day he was violently assaulted, Officer Sicknick would not have died the next day. Uh, I, I, I guess we don't have any common sense here. I guess I'm just a big dumb idiot. Because I, I think that if, gosh, if a medical examiner who's a medical doctor whose job it is to examine medical deaths, if they said something like this from the Capitol Police Office's own website, by the way, uscp.gov, this is on their website, press release, medical examiner finds Brian Sicknick died of natural causes. Now, this isn't the report but they accept it. So they still say he died in the line of duty. So I think these people are just, I don't know, maybe, maybe they don't understand causation or death. If Brian Sicknick died the following day, would that have still counted? Like how much time can elapse from the riot until it counts? It doesn't count anymore. If somebody died three days after the riot or one week after the riot, does that count? As a J6 death? I don't know. Now, as some people from, as some people select from the 41,000 hours that support the narrative they want to push, he says, those of you, so he's writing to his officers, those of you who watch Tucker and probably agree with him, who are here on January 6th, those of you who are in the fight, those of you who ensured that no member of Congress was hurt, those of you who contributed to the effort, know firsthand what actually happened. Hmm. Can they talk about it? Can they release their video? You fought like hell on January 6th and risked your lives to protect the Constitution. You saved every member of Congress and their staff. He says, TV commentary will not record the truth for our history books. The justice system will. The truth and justice are on our side. Well, my friend, if truth and justice were on your side, you would be able to be open and transparent about it. You could just, you could just give us all the video footage. Do your little redactions. Blur out the videos just like you did for Tucker. Give them to the defendants. Give them to all the people so that we can see them. Because that's what the truth requires. You people keeping everything behind closed doors and then creating your own narratives by self-selecting your own clips and then assembling those into highlight reels and then shoving those down everybody's gullets. That's not truth. That's not justice. Jacob Chansley sitting in a prison cell for three years plus and then another three years on the back end after being paraded around by the Capitol Hill police officer and wearing just an outfit and being extra loud is worth three years in prison. No, that's not the crime. They don't care about protest. If it were those people and their side protesting, they'd probably give them medals of honor. In this case, this is about waging war on political enemies. And these people are a part of the, the political soldier class for the left at this point in time. So the truth will come out. I am certain of that. As we continue to dig, there will be more. That's the Capitol Hill police officer saying that Brian Sicknick still died on January 6th, even though he did not. He died of two strokes in the brain at 9.30 p.m. the following night on January 7th. May he rest in peace. Now we are going over to the Sicknick family response, speaking of Brian Sicknick, because they're very upset about this. They don't like anything that Tucker Carlton had to say, and they blasted him. So we'll go through their statement. But before we do, we have to make sure we are properly energized because that statement is going to require some fortification and some green energy. But I'm not talking about that green energy. I'm talking about field of greens because we would all like to lose some of those leftover pandemic pounds. I know. But how sick are you, like I am, of all these weight loss ads for diets and fad pills and all this stuff? We've all been there. We've all done that. And we know they don't work. But you know what does? Eating five healthy servings of fruits and vegetables every day. You do that and the weight would probably just fall right off. But look, vegetables, not a fan. Who's got time to prepare all of that stuff every day? Instead, Let's talk about Field of Greens. Now, Field of Greens is a science-backed formula, very specific fruits and vegetables you're not going to find in any other product. Proper nutrition reboots your metabolism so you can burn calories faster and lose weight the healthier way. And Field of Greens is the only brand backed by a better health promise. 
You're going to look healthier. You're going to feel healthier. But the greater proof is going to come at the next checkup when you go see your doctor and he says, wow, you've lost weight. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. So let's get you started. Go on over to fieldofgreens.com. It's fieldofgreens.com. Super easy. Enter code Robert when you check out. You're going to order your real organic superfood. Field of Greens. It tastes good going down. The vegetables want to be eaten at fieldofgreens.com. Don't forget to use code Robert at checkout. All right. Now, Brian Sicknick's family, very unhappy with Tucker Carlson and the true 1-6 videos being released. Citizen Free Press on Twitter posted the link to the report, to the message. Here's what they say. The Sicknick family is outraged, they say, at the ongoing attack on our family by the unscrupulous an outright sleazy so-called news network of Fox News who will do the bidding of Trump or any of his sycophant followers. Wow. No matter what damage is done to the families of the fallen, the officers who put their lives on the line and all who suffered on J6 due to the lies started by Trump and spread by the sleaze slinging outlets like Fox. Fox has showed time and time again that they are little more than propaganda arm of the Republican Party. And like Pravda, they will do whatever they are told to keep the hatred and the lies flowing while suppressing anything resembling the truth. All they did was publish the videos and add some commentary to them. Fox does this not for any sense of morality, all right, as they have none. Wow. But for the quest for every penny of advertising money they can get. Don't forget to go to fieldofgreens.com and get your Field of Greens promo code Robert. Now, they say it is well past time that we move past Trump, the GOP, and all the lies which have severely weakened and divided our nation. Yeah. Tucker claims that Fox has been looking over the video feeds from the Capitol with full access supplied by our disgusting excuse for a House speaker. Wow. <laughs> They're pissed. Carlson's truth is to pick and choose footage that supports his delusional views that the J6 insurrection was peaceful and that Ashley Babbitt was some kind of martyr because she was shot in the process of breaking into the Capitol. Man, she's very angry right now. Who, who's writing this? Is this a, I don't know who put this together. Now, while making a criminal out to be a martyr, he is also downplaying the horrid situation faced by the U.S. Capitol Police and D.C. Metro, who were, okay, I, you know, I would agree that they got abandoned by the people in charge. Maybe you should take that up with Mayor Muriel Bowser, Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, the Sergeant at Arms. Uh, one of them's dead. One of them died. One of the Sergeant at Arms for the House or the Senate, I forget which, is now dead. On video, Officer Sicknick looks like he managed to shake off chemical irritants and resume his activities. He, they say that he was literally fighting for their lives. Did you see him? He, he was fighting for his lives while they were waving people out. One officer, Brian Sicknick, lost that fight the following day, and several more officers lost that fight the following weeks. And I think those were suicides, right? Huh. So on video, Officer Sicknick looks like he managed to shake off the chemical irritants and resume his duties. That he did. But his sense of duty and his incredible worth ethic were the driving force before he died. What's gonna, what is it going to take, they ask, for it to silence the lies of people like Carlson? Yeah, they're going to sue him. Fox is going to get hit with another lawsuit, I'm sure. What will it take to convince people that the J6 insurrection was very real, was very violent, and that the event was orchestrated by a man who is as corrupt and evil as Vladimir Pooty Poot? The Sicknick family would love nothing more than to have Brian back, as would we. I mean that genuinely, right? I, of course I want him back. Now, But he wasn't killed by the January 6th violent mob. That's just reality. So fictitious news outlets, they say, like Fox and its rabid followers will not allow that. Every time the pain of the day seems to have ebbed a bit, organizations like Fox rip our wounds wide open again, and we are frankly sick of it. Leave us the hell alone, she says. And instead of spreading more lies from Supreme Leader Trump, why don't you focus on real news? I don't know, like, what did she want us to talk about? This is kind of an important thing. This was the biggest thing since the Civil War, according to the president. So it kind of is real news there. All right, so, you know, shout out to mom and dad. They are having a tough time with this uh, over there. You know, I wish they, wish they wouldn't have politicized their son's death. You know, it would have kept them all out of this. 
maybe they could have been happier. You know, they're sick of it. Well, of course they're sick of it. I mean, the Democrats used them and abused them. They, they exploited this family for their own narrative. And now they're having to deal with the consequences. Now the truth comes out. Brian Sicknick wasn't hit in the head with a fire extinguisher, didn't die of chemical irritants. All of it was lies and fake. In fact, he was perfectly fine walking around the Capitol. So you can see, man, it must be a very difficult world to live in. Everybody told you one thing and then it's not the thing. And now everybody's mad at you. You politicized your son's death. Now you're probably regretting that. I feel bad for him. You know, hopefully they do find peace. I really do wish they do find peace, but uh, who knows if they will, because they got involved and in bed with the Democrats. We'll see how that works out for him. So that is the Brian Sicknick family response. Leave us the hell alone. And I encourage every, you know, leave them the, yeah, nobody's doing, nobody wants to do anything with the family, of course. We just want answers about the truth. Fortunately, Tucker Carlson was able to dig it up because his death was being used by a very dishonest media and a very dishonest political class who didn't give a crap about the Brian Sicknick family or mom and dad or anybody else involved. Now, the White House is continuing this stupid narrative that this really was the worst thing since the Civil War. Of course, that is nuts because... Uh, several thousand people died in 9-11. We also had the attack on Pearl Harbor, kind of a big deal. But apparently, 1-6, where four people died, was way worse. Here is Kareen. Last night, Tucker Carlson cherry-picked video surveillance from the January 6th insurrection, severely downplaying the I disagree that with day. that uh, he premise. He said the mob was orderly and meek and that they were tourists instead of insurrectionists. What's your response to Carlson and to Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who granted him access to that video? Um, anybody who watched that video would strongly degree, disagree. Anybody who watched that video... I watched it. Uh, I agree. In a with their own eyes in a real way. I did. And saw what happened on that day. Well, I was streaming. We were here. Disagree with what was just stated. Um, the president has been very clear. January 6th was the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. What? And we should be focused on making sure that never happens again. And uh, maybe you should secure your properties before waving people into them. And so we are certainly uh, come on we in. Agree. I know. Um, uh, no problem. Minority leader and uh, uh, and uh, Senator Schumer have already said this, and would hope that keeping the Capitol and Congress safe and secure remains uh, congressional leaders' number one goal, and that should be our focus, and that should be what should be considered here. Um, and uh, again, it was one of the darkest days of our democracy, and all you have to do is watch those videos and see how horrific it was. You see how sad it was, see an attack on the Capitol, which should not be happening in 2020. And uh, we got to get down to the bottom of what happened. We Again, do. I agree with on her on that one. And uh, I'll just leave it there. Yeah, I do. I, I do want to get to the bottom of it, Corrine. I agree with you completely. We'd love to get to the bottom of it. Love to know why there was no real security really anywhere. All, all of it was rejected. And why you can't be honest about what actually happened. We'll see if more video comes out, but the Capitol Police unhappy, Sicknick's unhappy. They'll continue to be unhappy, no doubt.